For now you start radiating loving kindness which first you start within you. That may this being, may this body be well, be happy, be healthy, be free from suffering, free from sickness, right? free from fear, free from anxiety. May I be free from fear, free from anxiety. May I live in peace and happiness. Hmm? Have these good thoughts in you. After that, you radiate these thoughts. Just all around you, all around, all beings around you, and then feel, radiate out in all the different directions, in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, above and below, so that it covers all the directions, that all beings are covered, human beings as well as all other beings, seen or unseen, far or near, radiate them. When you radiate out, you feel your aura of love, your aura of peace and calm extending out to all these different places. You can start with just radiating out from where you are and fill your whole room, fill the whole hall with your thoughts of loving kindness. Having these good thoughts for all the other practitioners, all the people who are around here first. And then extend it out a little bit to all within this monastery, premises of this monastery, and then all the surrounding areas, and then the whole town, the whole city, the whole country, and then extending out to the whole world and beyond this world to all the planetary systems and all beings and all realms of existence, like that. Step by step, step by step, your mind begin to suffuse out and reach out to all those places. When you do that, your mind becomes even calm and peaceful. Now, this practice of metta, the formula that we gave you is more than just metta. It goes beyond metta, but to have also karuna, compassion, mudita, which is altruistic joy or sympathetic joy. Metta is the thought of love, of well-being for others, that all beings be well and happy. It is a good wish. It's a wish for others, for all beings to be well, to be happy. That is a, it's a thought. That is metta. And then, karuna is the thought of compassion. The thought which you direct towards some beings who are less fortunate than you are, who are suffering. And you wish that they be free from suffering. Anyone who is ill, free from that illness. Be, who are in the grief and sorrow, be they be free from you, sorrow, free from grief, like that. And a wish for others to succeed, to progress in the practice, that is one of mudita, one of you share the joys, the happiness of others, you overcome jealousy, envy. Now, this practice helps you, the force of metta alone helps you to reduce the tendencies of anger, the tendencies of aversion. When you wish yourself well and happy. In fact, it is a practice when to do it, when your mind is well, when your mind is happy, you build up this thought force. That this body, this being, be well, be happy, and feel a sense of well-being and happiness. And naturally, from within, you will just radiate out. <laughs> then, when it happens, after you have developed these tendencies again and again, and it becomes a habit in you, as soon as you get angry, as soon as you get upset, your mind naturally brings out this thought, may I be well. May I 
tells you the mental energy which is concentrated there must naturally develop. How does it develop? It develops in an upward vertical direction. Of course, if you watch, if you watch keenly, if you observe with your mind, not with your, with your eyes, if you watch the development of the concentration, then you will be able to observe the development of your mind. Of course, if you are distracted, you start observing feelings in other parts of your body. Right? Then your mind is distracted from that. Then you will not be able to see. You will not be able to become aware of the mental development. But if you are able to focus your mind at one point, and from experience we find that in many cases, those people, if they can sit for half an hour to 40 minutes, then we find that there will be sufficient concentration. And if there are no distracting thoughts, although there may be a few thoughts coming to them, but they can easily return their attention to that object of meditation, which is the breath, breathing in and breathing out at one point. And when you are able to observe that there is not much distraction, then you find the mind developing up, 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 up. And once you observe this phenomena, sitting after sitting, so that you know it is not your mind conditioning it, the test that you sit again and sit again, and then after you have a few sittings, now you you are fairly confident now that your mind is developing. So here you come to know that your concentration is now getting matured, becoming matured. Now you are ready to enter absorptions. They talk about the jhanas. Jhanas means a mental state where your mind gets deep into concentration and for the purpose of we explained there are the different levels, different degrees of absorption. We talk about the Buddha explains absorption or jhana in terms of patama jhana, dutya jhana, tatya jhana, chatutta jhana. And this is how the Buddha defined what perfect concentration or right concentration means. If one has right concentration or perfect concentration, then one falls within these realms of first, second, third, fourth jhana. Mind is developed to that level. There are higher jhanas. Yes. There are the mind after you develop the fourth jhana, it naturally, if you stay a longer period, it will naturally develop to the fifth, sixth, seventh, up to the eighth, and there is also a ninth jhana. But we call this, we call the four jhanas as rupa jhana. Rupa jhana, rupa means form. That means this absorption, mental absorption, has arisen as a result of the mind getting concentrated in certain form, in certain, like breathing in and breathing out. Breath is a form, is a rupa. And there are many other objects which there are altogether about 40 different objects how the mind can take and observe to develop that absorption, mental absorption. But after we develop the mind, this rupa jhana, the next step is the mind goes on to develop what you call arupa jhana. Arupa jhana is where your mind gets absorbed in formless, formlessness, such as what? Space. Space is formless, 
right? There is no form in space. Space is formless. So the mind can be conditioned to just spread out in space, an infinite space, our castle. Then consciousness, infinite consciousness, consciousness, there is no form in that. Then the fear of nothingness, fear of nothingness, and neither perception nor non-perception, these are the higher jhanas or the arubha jhanas. But these jhanas are all conditioned states of mind, just as even the four jhanas are also conditioned. But for the purpose of developing insight, for the purpose of developing wisdom to penetrate in order to understand the realities of life, the reality of the world around us, we do not need to go up to that higher jhanas. That is why the Buddha, the Buddha after practicing all these different levels, the Buddha said, as long as you can develop up to this jhana, you have your perfect concentration, first, second, third, fourth. And then after that, bring down the mind to the normal functioning level and contemplate. By now, after you have been able to develop your absorption, first, second, third, fourth, and bringing it down to the second, first, and normal, your mind is pretty well controlled, under control. That is how you start your mind to become steady. And with this steady mind, you would be able to dwell at any phenomena, mental, phys physical phenomena, for a longer duration, and be able to penetrate and to see its true nature. What is the true nature? What is nature? You observe the word vipassana. Vipassana comes from this word pasati. Pasati means to see, to observe. The word, the prefix we implies in a special manner, to observe in a special manner. Which, what special manner? To observe in terms of characteristics of anicca or impermanence or change. Therefore you train the mind now, after you have developed the absorption and bring down your mind to normal functioning mind, you train the mind to observe every phenomena, be it mental or physical, in its true nature of anicca, of change. How do you observe this of rising and falling? How do you observe rising and falling? What is it that rise and fall? Before you observe phenomena rising and falling, you must understand this mental and physical phenomena. So we give you the lesson of observe mind and body, mental and physical things first. So the first lesson of vipassana, developing your vipassana, the first lesson of it, is to observe your mind and body. How you observe your mind and body? By observing your activities, the day-to-day -day activities, keeping your mind is as much possible mindfulness, clear mindfulness, total mindfulness, and you have in continuity, you keep yourself that's why the noble silence is important so that your mind does not get distracted. Your mind is able to observe everything that happens. Now, as you move slowly, as you speak slowly, as you go on a bit slower, you begin to observe that as you stand, you find that there is a thought from the sitting posture. If you want to move, you will find first there is a desire, there is an intention to move, then your body moves. 
That desire, that intention is called a thought, that is a mental phenomena, a mental process, and the body which moves is a physical phenomena. So you see, again and again, mental and physical, pertaining to this body as well as to outside. What are the outside things? Like the eye that sees form, visual objects in terms of color. That is physical phenomena. But the process of seeing, the process of noticing, of observing that form, that color, that is a mental process. Hearing, the sound that you hear is a physical phenomena. But your hearing process, the conscious, your ear becoming conscious of that sound, that is a mental phenomena. And similarly, there is your nose, there is odor, there is smell, and your nose smells. There is the smell or the odor, which is a physical phenomena, and the smelling of it is the mental phenomena. Similarly, the taste. The taste, the flavor, and the food, which reaches another physical phenomena, the tongue, the taste buds, the base of your tongue, then gives rise to thoughts, gives rise to feeling, good taste, become aware of the taste, your awareness of the taste, your consciousness of the taste, that's a mental phenomena. And then, as soon as that arises, then the thought is sensed, relates to the information, and you have the thought you want some more. And your hand grabs it. So you see how mind and body function the whole day through. You find the mind and body, mind and body, and when you can see mind and body, you will be able to see that the mind conditions, how the mind conditions the body. If you want to move, you observe how. Before the body moves, there is a thought. Then the body moves. If there is no thought, there is no movement. You test this walking. It's a good exercise when you walk and see. You stand straight. And then, when your mind is silent, you see when there's, a, there's an intention to move and your body starts to move, your legs start to move. So you see how the mind conditions the body. Mind is the cause, thought is the cause, body is the effect. And as you go on moving, you see cause and effect, cause and effect. The sound that you hear is a cause, the hearing is an effect. The object that you see is a cause, the seeing is an effect. And if you go further, you will be able to see how, after seeing the thoughts that forms, the thing that you see makes you conscious what you see. That consciousness conditions gives rise to an effect, a thought. And that thought becomes a cause to another effect. Your body moves. Your body, you turn your head to observe certain things. So, this lesson teaches us, makes the mind realize what? Realize that the nature of this being is that we function on the basis of mind and body mind and body, that there is no being as such, there is no person as such which is doing it, doing whatever work that you do, but it's a process of mind and body and a cycle of cause and effect. Then, when you're able to see mind and body cause and effect, we tell you, watch rising and falling. What is this rising and falling? See how the thought that has a reason, the intention to move, the thought rise and fall, and your movement also rise and fall. Everything is rising and falling. This is how you develop your mind 
to see the true nature of things in terms of anicca. That's what we call the vipassana practice. This vipassana practice is when your mind actively observes the phenomena of mind and body in terms of anicca, in terms of change. And when you observe change, you observe the unsatisfactory nature. And that you will begin to realize that as a quality of change, you find that there is nothing, there is no permanent entity as such that you can cling to. But you term as the self. There is no I, there is no my that can you cling to. It's only a physical, it's a process. So that is how we train the mind. And when you start to develop your mind to observe the true nature, and in terms of anicca, change, then what happens is the mind that dwells on the subject of change, that mind begins to develop insight. develop this insight more and more, your, your mind gets concentrated, insight gets concentrated, and that's what you again observe another phenomena, how the mind starts to rise up in a vertical direction, this, word, this time there's an inward movement of the mind, and you find how when the mind gets fished up to the high level of vipassana, we call that vipassana samadhi. As we differentiate from the samatha samadhi, where you develop the first, second, third, fourth jhana. Now that you have developed the four jhanas and you develop your insight, you begin to develop concentrated insight. It is with this concentrated inside that you are you are ready the mind will be ready to penetrate to see the realities of existence to see the true nature to see anicca clearly realize change as such this is what the novices has been telling you try to tell you a little bit about that experience how after developing their mind, this is how they realize how they see how they see a nature as such. We talk about change. We can explain to you that we all change from young until now. If you grow old, you will not doubt, you will nod your head and say yes. You agree totally that there is change. But do you realize what change is? No. Can you see? Can you observe before you change? No. But when you develop your mind, there are certain things, certain insights that you cannot see with your ordinary state of mind. Concentrate. When you develop your mind to a higher state, then you'll be able to see. Get into deeper concentrations and develop your insight, then you can penetrate. It is just like the focus. When you focus the microscope or telescope, when it is not in focus, you cannot see clearly. You cannot see things clearly. But when you start to focus, get the binoculars or get the telescope in focus, then you'll be able to see those images, those objects, very sharp and clear in your mind. That is what this Vipassana Samadhi is about, beginning to see the true nature of things. So, that is how. And after, upon realizing this, the heights, the depths to the realization, you will be able to transform your whole being as such. So, little by little, step by step, step by step, this is what they say. And uh, the time does not permit me to say very much further, but we will continue this later on. I think uh, as for our audience who have come, and uh, some of you have been coming to look after them, and uh, some of you also.
Vorweg tipping an eye and uh, and uh, wanting to grab hold of them again, waiting when the closing ceremony to take them back. Now already they are thinking the novices and upasikas are thinking of the home already. So still you have these few days. How many more days? Two more days. Make good use. One and a half days. Oh, one and a half days. I've also done this 
sort of thing. When we are practicing in the forest and our mind gets stuck, and it's not so easy to find, you know, a teacher or some guide to, to run to the guide every now and then and say, you know, can you please tell me what is happening and what is this? No, we can't do that. So, what I did was, when our mind was in the fix, I did not know what to do next. I looked at the picture of the Buddha. <laughs> I looked at the picture of the Buddha and then I just concentrate. Just observe it. It freed my mind. Then I began to observe the serenity, the calm, the composed posture of the Buddha. Absorb the calmness and tranquility. And then I say, it is as if speaking to the Buddha, but actually I am addressing my mind. <laughs> right? Tell me, what have I to do next? <laughs> what should I do next? And you find that, you know. After a little while, like the solution comes, like an answer comes. That is how some people say that, you know, we get revelation. Sometimes, sometimes, the believers come also and tell you <laughs> how to do it. Especially those who have been following track of what you are doing, your sincerity in practice. You see, sometimes. But, there are, the other cause that can come is, when you start to free your mind, and when you make that kind of determination, whatever thing that you have developed in the past, they can come up to rise up. You see? And then you just continue. You just come to know what to do, how to do like that. So you, get, you do get this kind of a problem, but what happens is this. If you make a firm determination, this is where all those religious objects, what are the purpose, what's the use of religious objects? So the Buddha, he makes know that. It is for your mind to focus. You focus your mind. And then after that, if you have the faith, if you have, if you're able to recall the virtues of the Buddha, you recall those virtues, and you start to develop energy, mental energy as such. Faith or sattva is a condition of the mind, it's a mental factor which conditions energy to arise. And you use the energy to direct, have effort, the right effort, and then to develop mindfulness, and with mindfulness, Pure power in concentration, and with concentration, wisdom dawns on you. That is what, these are what you call the five mental faculties. Develop these five mental faculties, the faculties of faith, of confidence, the faculty of effort, energy, mental energy, faculty of mindfulness, of concentration and wisdom, and it is those five mental faculties when you develop will become your mental power which enables you at least to temporarily suppress, temporarily check those defiling tendencies of sensual desire, of anger, aversion, of loss and torpor, of restlessness and doubts. When these five mental hindrances are temporarily suppressed, then you will find certain other mental factors arise. These are what you call the jhana factors, the factors of vipaka, vichara, pneeti, sukang, ekakata. What is it? The factors of vipaka, application of your thought, and you apply your thought at one point, 
Vichara is discerning. So turn your attention at that point. That is also a, another mental factor, and you observe it in one spot, that is Ekakata. And then when you perform this treating, then naturally the result, Piti Sukha, arises. Piti is that rapturous feeling, the kind of satisfaction that you get, it gives you the enthusiasm to go on, the zen, the feeling to go on, to practice further. And Sukha is that bliss, the kind of ease that you feel. There is the bodily ease and the mental ease where your body becomes free from tension and you begin to be able to control any tense, a feeling of tense and pain. Now you are absolutely under control. Now this is how you experience to come as such. And as you go further and further, this to come becomes even more refined, more refined, refined in the form of very pleasant feeling. And eventually you transcend even this pleasant feeling so that your mind is just in focus one, in focus. Then uh, this is not step by step. In the first jhana, you may have these mental jhana factors, these five, five jhana factors as you develop further. You drop off those mental factors and you start to reduce the three to two and to one mental factor when your mind is in focus. And after that, you bring down your mind to normal and your mind is quite in focus. So this is how you develop the mind. And uh, as you would be going out away for the, what you call, uh, to face the world in life and uh, tomorrow, maybe from tomorrow, we will have to start to prepare you to go out and uh, to tell you what your worldly duties and responsibilities are. We still give you time tonight for you to further develop your mind and uh, so I think it is enough for the time being and uh, we'll spend a few minutes to round up this session by just sitting quietly and then sharing the merits that we have acquired on this occasion and for all our novices and upasikas, all the good work, all the effort that you have put in, these are the merits that you have acquired share this merit with all the devas, all celestial beings, all the radiant ones, and also to transfer and dedicate this merit to all your departed relatives, friends, and then make your aspiration determined so that you can progress further. In the calmness of your mind, if you like this, to watch your breath, breathing in, breathing out, keeping your body in an upright position and take a breath, breathing in, breathing out normally. Just focus your attention just above your upper lip. Observe the breath as if the breath goes in and out through the point above your upper lip. Any thought, any distraction that arises as soon as you become aware, you will return your attention to that spot, that area above your upper lip. Keep your attention there for a few minutes.
bring the calmness of your mind. Just observe breathing in, breathing out normally and free your mind. And observe the calm, the quietness within. Observe the silence within. And feel the sense of well-being and happiness throughout the whole body.
for the spiritual well-being and happiness of all your departed relatives and friends. Whoever that comes to your mind, think of your departed relatives and friends. Have a good wish that wherever they may be, may they have the opportunity to grow in the Dhamma, to lead a good life and face the way for them to be free from all suffering. Ah, uh-huh. 
Look at things carefully. That's what I think you develop. 